So you'll notice this is not our normal angle for these weekend reviews. Um, typically, if you're new here, this is a time of the week where I show my weekly vlogs, but this past week I basically had a migraine every day and although I was a functional person with a migraine, I just filming vlog clips was like the bottom of my priority list and before I knew it, it was Sunday and I hadn't filmed anything, so I just decided. I would just update you guys here because I still like updating about things that I've read because I did still read things. It was one of the few things I could do, thankfully. And so yeah, let's talk about what I've read. I only read, I think, two more stories in Once Upon an Eid. One was a graphic novel kind of thing. It had cool pictures. See, like, it had pictures. So that was cool. Um, and then the one before it was The Feast of Sacrifice. Um, again, just great holiday vibes, like I've said in the previous two vlogs. I'm um, just enjoying this anthology as like a nice, I don't know, breath of fresh air, hopeful vibes, especially for, you know, us in Boston. We're getting close to Thanksgiving, so that's exciting. I have also put in a huge chunk in Oathbringer. So I've read a, a lot of Oathbringer. I've kind of, um, like I said in the last vlog, I have an audiobook for it now. So when I'm on my commute or I go to the gym, I listen to the audiobook. I also have on my Kindle, and then I have the physical for when I want to look at the pictures or if I'm just feeling paper. I don't know if you guys get that way. Sometimes I just like to feel paper. Um, I'm really liking this reread. Um, my first read, I was, like I said, pretty good with it. Like, it was great, but it wasn't like Words of Radiance or anything like that. And I think knowing the arcs has been really helpful because this book is a little anxiety-inducing. Um, uh, particularly for, actually, yeah, Shallan and Kaladin, pretty anxiety-inducing, and you get to learn Dalinar's backstory, which is, like, a lot. So knowing the arcs um, and also having context and knowing what to pick up on is really cool. There was a crossover with Warbreaker that I missed my first read, so I'm noticing it this time. It's got me so pumped for Rhythm of War, but I'm in part three right now. And so the way I approach this book in the Stormlight Archives is I treat it like a really long TV show with like 25 episodes and a bunch of filler episodes because there are filler moments. There's a lot of drawn out quiet moments where you get to have a lot of good character development with like the bridge crew and things like that. Um, per the other books there are five parts um, and I would say so far parts one and three are really important for the plot and part two was kind of less important, but it was still enjoyable, if that makes sense. So there's a lot of filler. This is definitely a middle book in a story arc, but I'm really enjoying it. And having the audiobook's been great. I've never listened to the audiobook for Stormlight. I have actually listened to an audiobook for Warbreaker before by accident. And I just think that's been really good for when I'm at a chapter where I'm like, I don't have the focus to read this right now, but I kind of want to be reading. Like I put up a bunch of pictures in my room while listening to Oathbringer the other day and it was a very productive way of like unpacking but listening to a part that was a little bit slower for me but I was still like engaged. I really like Oathbringer and I am all in Michael Nip's discord where they have stormlight threads so if you're reading it or want to read it we always tag our spoilers but they're doing it for Storm Along but it's also just great reading it with a bunch of other people who are rereading it. It's been a great time. If you don't know I'm team Adolin. Like, I love Adolin. He is a cross between a German Shepherd and a Golden Retriever as a human, and he is the best character. I know he's a side character, but he gets lots of point of views. I know everyone loves Kaladin, but Adolin's my boy. Adolin's my rock. I say that as someone who actually really likes Hawkeye from the Avengers, <laughs> so I feel like that's just who I am. I like, I like the consistent, stable, supporting characters. <laughs> kind of need that to lean on because... Uh, oh, everyone in this book needs like a therapist and like they, they've, they got some trauma on their shoulders and I feel bad for them frequently. But yeah, I am just loving it. I'm hoping to finish it so I can get to Dawn Shard as soon as that comes out because we don't know when it's dropping, but I guess it's end of the month, early November, who knows. And then I also actually read Incendiary. This is a book I've been meaning to read for a really long time, and I was a little apprehensive about it because it is young adult, which I like young adult, but young adult fantasy does not always work unless it uses the tropes I like and uses those tropes 
well. So that's very specific. And luckily for me, that's what happened. I'm, I'm not going to say it's a favorite of all time, but I had a great time. I found it really cool how they, it's, like I said, it's a young adult series, but it took place based off like the Spanish Inquisition. So I loved that setting. I loved hearing Spanish influenced names that I wasn't just somewhere in Europe. I was specifically in Spain or at least a Spain inspired place. That was super cool. What else? Oh. Um, so our main character, Ren, she's kind of like Rogue from X-Men, where if she touches someone, she can steal their memory, essentially. And if she does that too much, she can kill them. So Rogue, if she touched someone, could steal their powers or their life force, depending on if they were normal or a mutant. So it kind of had that sort of thing there. Also, the fact that she can steal memories is really cool. There's like four mainish powers among the Moria, they're called, and they can be enhanced by metals. So I liked the magic system. I thought that was really interesting. It's a rebellion story. I'm big on rebellion stories. I liked Tagana a fair bit. Um, I do think the author was like going for like Star Wars, but fantasy. I think the only part of Star Wars that's here is that it is a rebellion vibe. Like That's super cool. I really liked how we got to learn about a character through Ren picking up different memories of other people experiencing interactions with this character. That was super cool. That was a cool way of character developing. My one thing is like, I don't think Ren got character developed well, but like, Ren is a character who doesn't really know who she is because she has so many other thoughts in her head that aren't hers. I found the Moria to be really interesting. Their rebellion groups are the Whispers, and they are... I think a lot of times your rebellion groups are very, like, they're the good guys, going to take down the bad guys, and although I think that's still very here, their methods, the grayness of their methods is, I think, very much highlighted in their treatment of Ren, who has this past where, as a kid, she was used by the throne to do stuff. So there's a lot of cool things going on here. And like I said, it had the tropes I like, which I'm not telling you because I don't want to spoil things, but it had some it had some tropes I liked. And I'm excited for the second book, which I think comes out in May. So for me, young adult fantasy in the fall, it worked great. That also is, tends to be the time of year where I like a good young adult fantasy, a good retelling or whatever. This one's not really a retelling, although it had like I don't know, it had things that reminded me of like Beauty and the Beast, although it's not Beauty and the Beast, if that makes sense. So yeah, and I got to buddy read this with a bunch of people. I just thought it was a really fun young adult that did some things better than a lot of young adults do. Um, is it mind blowing for me? No, but I, it was exactly what I needed when my brain hurt. So that was great. And yeah, so that's what I read. I also got to play games so I got to play some games this weekend so that was fun we watched Blade 2 we started The Witcher yeah and now this week what are my reading plans coming up finish this bad boy somehow I think I'm rereading this faster than I reread Words of Radiance but I think that's because I've decided to like focus on things so I'm going to hopefully finish Oathbringer this week and I'm buddy reading Black Sun with Tori from Tori Mara, whose channel is amazing. Um, I assume you follow her if you follow me, because she's like 5,000 subscribers, but she's great sci-fi and fantasy content. If you like what I talk about, she just has m more. She has different suggestions, but it's the same like genre space. And so we just started this. I'm not far. I just started it on my commute this morning. <laughs> but very excited to read this this week. And so those are my only goals. Well, and picking away at Once Upon an Eid, as I do. And, you know, work on my sweater, relax. Uh, this Friday, I have a tag that I filmed the end of the year tag in this outfit, so, you know. And next week, I got some good videos. I don't know which one's coming out when, but the boyfriend's gonna make an appearance in one, and the other one is a science behind the magic that is very October themed, so get ready for that. I still have to film them, but I'm very excited, so yeah. What have you been reading? I hope your head's been kinder to you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.